Hey, I'm Bo Beery, and we're gonna jump right into a two-part series on how to begin investing in real estate, but look like you're already a veteran. Let's go. All right, so this video assumes that you are wanting to invest yourself, not passively. Passively meaning investing your money in another group who buys real estate and uses your money and pays you dividends. This video also assumes you're not buying your first asset at 50 or 60 units, something big and large. There's a ton of real estate investing teaching videos out there that don't tell you a big dirty secret, which is there's a lot of upfront work that you have to do before you even start looking at real estate. Reputation is huge in this business. And as you know, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And one of those ways is to be able to react fast, fast to opportunities, fast to offers, fast in due diligence, fast in closing. And in order to do all that, you gotta be set up on the front end to pounce quickly. So we're going to take you through 12 steps that'll walk you from point zero knowing nothing to closing on your first property and what you should do next after closing. Step number one before you look at any property is to establish three lending sources. I suggest a local bank or credit union, a national bank or credit union like Wells Fargo, and a mortgage broker. A mortgage broker is someone who has access to lots of banks and institutional financing like Fannie and Freddie, which offer really good rates and terms on multifamily. Now, I would suggest having one or two choices within each of the local, national, and mortgage brokers so they can be available to you when you need them. You need to get to know these guys. Take them to lunch. Become friends with them. Understand the process. You want to make sure they know your financials so that you understand what you're capable of purchasing. The more they know about you and that you know about them, the faster they're going to be able to get you approvals when you bring them the first deal. You do not want to wait to be in a deal under contract and then you're establishing banking relationships. You'll never get it done in time. Step number two, you need to assemble a full team and this will take you some time. You need property managers, inspection companies once you're under contract. You need surveyors. I would suggest at least two or three surveyors having relationships because as soon as you go to contract, that's one of the longest lead items during an inspection period. You need to have one or two attorneys you like, two or three insurance companies to be able to bid the properties that you're buying with an environmental company when during due diligence they're going to do a phase one environmental they're going to look at mold asbestos lead-based paint you need to have a handyman come with you as well an appraiser that you know and trust that's big in the market and concentrates on the asset class that you work on step number three get liquid you want to make sure that you have the equity to purchase a property that is ready to go immediately the last thing you want to do is scramble for the deposit money up front you need to have access access to somewhere between 1 and 10% of the purchase price immediately for the initial and second deposit. The initial deposit establishes the deal up front. The second deposit comes after the inspection period is over. By the time you close in 60 to 90 days, you want to have access to somewhere between 20 and 40% of the purchase price, depending on the loan that you get. Have this done up front so you don't have the stress during due diligence. Now, step number four, if you want to do some next level kind of stuff, when you really want to make a serious impression to everyone you're working with and establish an incredible reputation, create an about you package. Now remember, we're still in the early stages. We haven't talked to any brokers yet. We aren't even looking at properties. I want you to do four things in your about you package. You're going to have your investment criteria, a bio about yourself, letters from bankers that you've befriended, and eventually you will have seller and broker testimonials after you've done a couple deals. So very few investors I work work with do this kind of thing, but it makes a huge impression on me and the sellers I work with. In the investment criteria, you want to keep it fairly broad so you don't miss out on opportunities. You need to at least give them a unit range when they're looking for deals for you, what locations you'll buy in. You also want to establish what type of apartments you're looking to buy. I suggest you start with conventional because student and affordable is very niche. And lastly, you want to tell them whether you're looking for something that needs a little bit of work, in which case it's value add, or you want something more stabilized. 
If you're a beginner, you probably want something more stabilized that's cash flowing right away. Now, the reason I want you to put together a biography or a bio, if you will, is I want to humanize the transaction. When the seller feels like there's a connection there, it's so much easier to get deals done, especially when things come up. So what are we going to put in it? Give a little bit about your background, things you've done and accomplished, where you went to school, what you currently do for a living if you're not full time. What are your hobbies? I know that's kind of corny, but if you love cars, they may love cars too. Put in a picture of yourself or your family as well because that builds extra connection. The last two things you're going to put on the about you package is the letters from the lenders. And then after you do your first deal, you'll put in testimonials from sellers and brokers. Now on the banker letters, the letter is basically just saying that they have a banking relationship with you and that you are established enough to purchase X price based on what they would lend to you. Now the whole point of the about you package is to remain competitive. Remember, buying is a huge competition business. There are other investors that you're always going to be up against when buying assets. And you want to make yourself two things. Number one, marketable. And you want number two, you want to instill confidence in the seller and the broker that you've got your stuff together and can perform on closing on this asset. Step number five before you look at any real estate is huge, huge amounts of market research. You need to be able to look and sound like you know what you're talking about to brokers and sellers. Below here are all the tools that I suggest you tap into so you can learn everything about the markets, including sale prices, rent amounts, absorb demographics. You want to be able to react to a property immediately because you already know everything about it, about the surroundings, about the location it's in, and what you can do to it. Step number six, before you've even looked at any properties, make sure you've got a letter of intent or LOI template and a purchase contract template set up and ready to go so you can react fast to opportunities. Now, I carry an LOI template on my website at bowbeery.com. Just click on resources at the top and then pop their templates and guides. Make sure you run my LOI by any attorney before submitting. As for the purchase contract, make sure that's put together by an attorney of your choice and make it as concise as possible and easy to read, but by still protecting yourself. Having the LOI and purchase contract templates done up front will allow you to move quicker and with more confidence because you already know them like the back of your hand. This is the end of part one, which is all the pre-prep work before you begin looking for investments. Now head over to part two where we're going to start looking for real estate investments to buy. Link to part two is down in the description below.